Hello and welcome to Make Sense. I am your host, Brittany Haley, and this episode we are going to be discussing everything fintech. My guest this episode is Megan Zamaro. She is a digital service specialist and is knowledgeable about everything fintech. Hey, Megan, how's it going? Hi, Brittany, I'm good. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. So let's jump right into it. What is fintech? So fintech, that's really just kind of a shortened uh, form of it. It's financial technology. So financial technology can be anything from, you know, a Zelle app, Venmo, uh, even your online banking app. So anything that you can do your finances digitally. Awesome. All right. And what are some different kinds of fintech and how are they used? So we have, I think the most popular things that people would understand most is the person-to-person -person payments. So again, like your Zelle, your Venmo, Cash App, um, again, your mobile banking app. We have things like Acorn or Chime or, um, uh, let's see what the other ones are, uh, Mint, which also supports uh, just like your financial overall profile. Nice. And how are financial institutions utilizing fintech? So because we're, we're progressing towards a digital world, right? So they have started to integrate these things into their banking apps, into their online banking, uh, so that folks can use these items uh, with, with their primary banking, but also attach these to that banking. And what are some issues that financial institutions are running into with fintech? I would definitely say fraud. Fraud has been a big thing. I think as we grow digitally, uh, you know, scammers, fraudsters are looking for ways to kind of penetrate your information. Uh, so you, you're putting a lot of information into these fintech apps and, and technologies. So uh, the more we do that, the more we need to robust our, our fraud deterrence, but they're kind of already getting in there and, and getting some of your information. And on the flip side of that, what are the pros to utilizing fintech? So I, I think some of the pros are it's 24-7, right? So you could be laying on the beach and applying for a loan. You could be, uh, you know, getting ready to go into a movie and transferring funds for dinner later that night, um, you know, checking some portfolios, things like that, um, while you're out shopping or you're up at 3 a.m. and you have the time. So um, that's the nice piece about it is it's, it's readily available to you at all times. Absolutely. And thinking of fintech, so the digital banking world versus traditional brick and mortar physical branch locations when it comes to banking, um, how do you think those kind of stack up against one another? Well, we're, we're social people, so we do like to go into the brick and mortar or the bank or credit union um, and talk to people and, and interact with them. Uh, you get more of a personable experience with that. Uh, so I think that is the biggest downfall of the digital banking is that folks still want that interaction. They want to be uh, going in and talking to someone back and forth, kind of like we are now, whereas with digital, you, you either get a chat bot or someone in chat who you could still be talking to or an email back and forth, uh, less personable. Okay. And are there any other <clears throat> things in summary or any other inputs that you have with FinTech or kind of the comparison of the two? Uh, you mean with uh, brick and mortar and the digital side of things? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I think, you know, we, I had discussed with someone earlier, you know, if you're in person, things like fraud and stuff like that could really be mitigated right then and there, uh, where if we have folks coming into a branch and they're concerned about something, uh, we can kind of walk through it with them, talk to them about it, talk it through. Um, but then with digital, again, things can happen so quickly, you may not realize that you're being a victim of fraud. Um, so right. that's probably one of the biggest um, uh, differences, negative differences, I would say. Yeah, and you definitely bring up a good point that it's kind of easier in an in-person environment to pick up those red flags right. and to kind of say, wait, stop, what's going on here? Mm -hmm. um, so you do bring up a good point about the fraud side of things. Can you think of any tips, tricks, or hacks to people out there to kind of help them mitigate that fraud when it comes to utilizing fintech or online banking? 
Yeah, absolutely. So I would say, you know, never share your password. It doesn't matter who it is. Um, your password should be your password. Uh, a lot of times people will be contacted by someone who they think is from their financial institution or one of these fintech applications um, requesting an access code or a, or a password, which really they're just trying to get into your information. Um, the other big one is public Wi-Fi. I don't think people realize that that convenience can definitely uh, make you vulnerable for uh, for a lot of uh, fraud situations, people can get into your information. I actually had spoken to a guy who went to Brazil uh, not too long ago, and he realized he had some uh, random text messages coming through, like, you know, your account might be hacked or your debit card may not be working. So we talked about it, and he actually was using public Wi-Fi uh, while in Brazil. So someone most likely was on that, was able to get into his information and other people's information through their cellular device. and. Um, tried to hack him and more phishing in that sense, try to get some more information out of him. Well, that's definitely something I never realized with the use of public Wi-Fi. Yeah. You know, you assume things like that would be safe, but probably, especially internationally, they don't have the same kind of regulations that we have here in the Correct. U.S. Correct. So that is a really, really good point. Um, okay, so anything, um, let's kind of go into a summary, but let's talk about the flip side. So. What do you think are the positive impacts of FinEd on consumers and financial institutions? So I think one of the big ones for financial institutions is this is going to be a more inexpensive way to provide services to their members or, or customers. And, and with that, then they can also provide maybe higher interest rates on CDs, things like that. They're going to save money in certain areas. Now, I don't see us going 100% digital anytime soon. Um, I think a lot of folks see it like maybe in the next 10 years or so, um, but we're slowly getting there. So a lot of companies or financial companies will definitely save some money on that end. Um, and then for the consumer, I, I really think it's the convenience of it. It's having everything at your fingertips and and being able to just, whenever you want, use your, your banking information. Right, absolutely. And we'll have to get into another episode about budgeting and um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> not... Not shopping at 3 a.m. Um, that's when I that's <laughs> when Amazon. I do my best shopping. Yeah, that's when I'm on Amazon. <laughs> Insomnia shopping. That's yeah. going to definitely be a future episode. Um, all right. So, what are some future fintech trends that you see? How do you see things going? What are some different trends? So, one of the things that I've uh, researched and read about is I think with fintech, we're going to become a more cashless society, less paper, things like that. Um, and again, I, I think a lot of these brick and mortar or actual physical locations will start to dissipate over the next several years. Mm -hmm. um, COVID was a huge awakening. Businesses realized they didn't need to have an actual location. People could work from home, that kind of stuff. So with that, I think it's catapulting us into this, this era of, of not having so many physical locations. Yeah, definitely. Um, all right, and any any final remarks or final thoughts at all on the subject? No, I think that's I think that's it. I think that's what I got. <laughs> all right, awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining the show today. I appreciate your insight and your knowledge. It was great to talk about fintech, and we would love to hear from you if there is a topic that you would like to see future. Fe if there is a topic that you would like to see featured on a future show, you can send us an email at finned at lemonstercu.com. We'd love to hear your suggestions or questions for future shows. And I hope all of that made sense. Thank you.